Hello Furs from the Web, my name is Scar and this is the history of furry music. There are many things that separate the furry fandom from other fandoms, and one of them is how the fandom is reliant on its own community. Other fandoms, for the most part, are based around one specific franchise, whereas the furry community spreads across an entire art style, in this case being anthropomorphism. And unlike the collective anime fandom, there isn't really media being made particularly for this fan base, except by one group, themselves. The furry community is mostly sustained based on its own fan base, with creators at the heart of it, making everything from web comics to art to YouTube videos. However, there is one specific type of content in the fandom that has been fairly prevalent, but never really hit the mainstream culture. This is furry music. Stand back, coming in fast, and you won't know what gave you chills. Get back, claws are all out, and they're ready for the kill. It's time, the night's on. Furry music has been around for a while, but only really began when the fandom had its first major growth, right before the odds. Furry music has had many creators and groups come and go, but still exists in prominence today. This video is going to talk about some of the most notable creators in their story, from beginning to end. So sit back and let me take you back to Germany in 1997. Thomas Hagerfeld also known as Kama C. Fox, is the first person to discuss. Thomas's persona Kama is a feral cape fox who loves life and music. Thomas himself was a composer, singer, lyricist, and piano player who had many years of musical education. He has a love for the creative arts and things related to graphic design. Kama is a person of interest though because back in 1997, he decided that the fandom needed a central music hub for composers and musicians alike. Kama founded the Furry Music Foundation, the first real hub for music creators in the fandom. The first piece of music released under the banner was a piece by himself, Happy Weasel. Sven Take It Off, better known as Cheetah, and the chairman of your friends for over two decades, also became a prominent member in the Furry Music Foundation. Cheetah was also famous for things such as Furry 8000, an internet radio station for German furries, and the Pawhead Show, something I may talk about in a future video. Cheetah took charge of a project and compiled music from nine artists, including himself, Helsch, Nessus, Cougar, Shalian, Skaven, Kama, Lutra, and Arnie. These 19 tracks were published together as the album Furry Fantasies in 1998 the first album for the Free Music Foundation, and for the fandom as a whole. The album was met with mixed reception due to a varied quality among the CDs mailed out, and a lack of musical variety since they were all too electronic, according to some people. The second album released by the Free Music Foundation was called Silky Fur. It's hard to know when this album was released, since according to Wikifur, it was supposedly released in 1997, but this is impossible since Free Fantasies was released in 1998. Everywhere else shows it was released after Free Fantasies, so I think it's likely the year is incorrect, since I doubt that two CDs were released within the same year that the group was founded. The CD released with 14 tracks, featuring music from Say, Kama, Fairlight, and Nightcap. There isn't a whole lot of other info on the CD, at least that I can find. And to be fair, trying to dig up info from an album that's two decades old is kinda hard. The Furry Music Foundation would release one final album in 2000, Furry Fantasies 2. Furry Fantasies 2 saw many criticisms of its predecessor resolved, and also boasted 16 tracks from a combination of 8 different composers. It was published by Cable Cats, a now defunct company, but performed and was received much better than the original. The album saw some of the more well-known tracks from the Free Music Foundation, including The Wolf and You by Kama, Industrial by Cheetah, and my favorite song of all time, Dragonfire by Jumpy. The 
The album featured music from Jumpy, Cheetah, Kama, Fairlight, Red Louts, Ice Fuchs, Shurkan, Say, and Soulstorm. I actually wanted to get a copy of this album myself, and I reached out to Cheetah to see if this could happen. He told me that while there were no more copies of the first Free Fantasies, he had a few copies of the second lying around somewhere. He did stop responding though, until literally the day I tweeted out I was going to be making this video, which he commented on and I then replied again. Ben, if you are watching this, I really want a copy of that CD. It's a piece of the fandom's history. As time passed, the Furry Music Foundation grew greatly. It saw people such as Moonchild, Goldenrod, and even To The Ranting Griffin join on. The Furry Music Foundation often premiered at the Furry Music Cafe, a reoccurring event at Eurofurns that started in 2003. At one point, it had at least 40 members. In 2000, the website had a design update by Nessus, but in the years waning after their last album, things began to slow down. I can't really find anything on why the Free Music Foundation died out, but it's likely just a loss of interest or the creators getting busy with other things. A relaunch of the group was announced in 2010, but this never took off, leaving only a webpage called The Ashes for another 7 years. In 2017, the website was taken down, and in 2018, a chunk of the music files were removed from furry.de. Today, the Furry Music Foundation is little more than an old memory, buried by time with fandom's new use, and almost never discussed by anyone. These days, some of the former members such as Cheetah and Jumpy are staff at Eurofurns, and others like To The Rant and Griffin have gone off to do their own thing. I actually began archiving a lot of the music from the Free Music Foundation on a side channel I started, but never got to finish before some of the files were taken down later last year. All of this being said, however, while the final years of the Free Music Foundation were solidifying its death, some new players appeared, and music in the fandom was far from over. Lane James Armour was born in 1984 Scotland. Better known as Fox Seymour, he discovered his love for the piano at an age of only four. In 2004, he released his first album called The Spirit of the Wolf. He got involved in the furry community very early on, joining for Affinity all the way back in 2006. Fox Seymour has proved himself a popular composer and has continued to release several albums since his debut. The second album, The Ballad of Midnight, is where his character Fox Amor made his debut. Fox Amor mostly does soundtrack instrumental pieces, either orchestral or new age. His persona is an anthro-red fox who is a user of magic and was born in an alternate dimension. In 2009, an independent film company called KE Films created a short documentary all about Fox Amor with the title of That's Amor. The documentary shows off his studio at the time and features an interview with him. It also features some unreleased music that hadn't been heard anywhere else at the time. Unlike some of the other musicians in the fandom, Fox Seymour found success in a musical career, working with a game studio called Supervillain Studios to score a video game, and even touring around the UK and USA for concerts. He currently works as a pianist for the Queen's Hotel in Bridge of Allen, Scotland. He has been the guest of honor at several conventions, and is an active administrator on Fur Affinity. He still makes music today, and even has collaborated a lot with another person of interest. In 2008, a man by the name of Jared Clark had inspiration to become a rock musician. He met up with two other people, Derek Wilbur and Andrew Kotz, and they formed the band Look Left. After the three spent a year in college together as dorm mates, in 2010 they released their first album titled The College Years to Bandcamp. 
Immediately after, they began work on honing their skill, getting better equipment, and started a new project. Releasing early of 2011 was their second album, You Should Drink More. They would continue to release albums including Masters of Tiny Shoes, Bite the Green Apple, and Waiting. As these came and went though, a new member named Matt Royak began playing as their live percussionist, before finding his way into the production of some of their albums. The real popularity came with the group's final album. Although things began getting shifty after the album Waiting, everyone graduated, got jobs, and were starting to move on with life. However, they came together one last time to produce their biggest hit, Transition. After this, the band split, leaving Jared Clark to continue on his own. The last scene of Look Left was a collection of tracks from the first four albums, uncreatively called The First Four. Jared Clark continued on his own under the alias of Pepper Coyote. Pepper began releasing music on a separate band camp since 2011 and continues to this day. He has been a guest of honor at many conventions, including Rainforest, Effing United, and others. He also does a lot of collaborative work with Fox Amar, sparking an unofficial band called Fox and Pepper. The thing is, though, not all fandom musicians have continued on with their work. We all kept saying that we won't get caught like everyone else. Before I go any further, I want to acknowledge something important. For whatever reason, this person decided to pretty much erase themselves from the fandom. Wiping wiki for pages, his for affinity profile, and even his own website away. I am putting him in this video because while I can respect his desire for whatever reason to leave the fandom, I do not think it is worth trying to erase your history, and that for the history's sake, that he is worth talking about. While the Free Music Foundation was difficult to find information on, this man was somehow even harder due to how extensive he was. Boom! Ah, uh, g'day, g'day, g'day. It's Quickie Wobbles. Coming to you from the Neptune Room. I've written a bit of a song about furries, set it in a reggae hip hop style. 1995, two years before the Free Music Foundation was founded, an Australian man named Simon found an interest in this growing fandom and stuck his first wing into it. Out of Perth, he was a costume maker and an artist as well. He earned a reputation of being a gateway furry, since he led a lot of interest at first trying his first fursuit named Womble. In 2001, he released the first version of his most famous piece, The Furry Song. The original version of The Furry Song was under the alias of Kooky Womble and drew in quite some popularity. The purpose of it was to serve as an introduction to the community, while also shutting out some of the stereotypes that had been made about furries. Simon, or as we now know him as Curl the Raven, was dissatisfied with the piece though, and thought the last verse kind of just bashed on people making the stereotypes without offering real solutions to it. The song went through many iterations. In 2004, the high version was released, with a slightly toned down groove and improved lyrics. He did ultimately, however, come to the same conclusion that the song just wasn't good enough and eventually took it down like its predecessor. He was releasing some other music at the time, but all I could find was the Bliss Blaster EP that released in 2005. His current music career peaked in 2009, when on February 25, 2009, he released the furry album for the world. I do also just want to point out that that was my ninth birthday, just a silly little coincidence. The furry album featured 10 tracks, ranging from instrumentals to full-blown lyrical songs. Right at the forefront of the album, however, is the third and final version of the furry song. The album has songs containing topics ranging from long-distance relationships to failing at making your own fursuit. It even has the most hilarious and satirical song I have ever heard, and it really gives me and my friends a kick every time we hear it. However, somewhere between 2011 and 2013 is when he decided to erase himself from the web. There has been very little chatter I can find on what happened to him, but people just seem to speculate that he grew out of it, got sick of the drama, or simply wanted to move on with his life. 
The only thing I can find on him was an archive of his Fur Affinity page that in his bio really spoke of him having a distaste of where the fandom was going and that he just didn't connect with it anymore. At some point, his perception of the fandom really shifted, ironically quite polarizing to how he described it in his music from the past. He actually said it was damaging to him on a psychological level. He also mentioned returning under a new character called Kuiru, but only to stay in touch with a few individuals. And eventually, even this got removed. Curl vanished from the face of the fandom and hasn't been heard from since. Curl was making music in the fandom for a little over a decade, beginning in the late 90s and concluding with the free album in 2009. However, there is someone who cannot be ignored on the topic of free music and has been running for even longer. Hello. Welcome to Untrack Volume 5. Remember by Slap Hot Slap. Colin, Kissy McClam. Early November. Brown. Darius. Shadow Fleeson. Mayhem. Flaxen. Matthew Brown Hot. And all the things. The compilation will be me now. Emma was born as a male in 1998, but has been questioning their gender for quite a while. By the late 90s, despite being young, they were already playing with making fan games. Early 2000s came, and they started playing with composition software. Emma is known by their nickname Emma SX, a pun of MSX, which was a computer architecture from Microsoft back in 1983. They are also known by their label names, and one of their characters named Renard. Renard was exposed to the fandom at a really young age, but really began to gain a foothold between 2006 and 2007. In her own words, this is when she began to feel like she had a real presence online, and when she started going to furcons. At the time, they felt a bit like an outcast, and even labeled the music they made at the time as pretentious. Things took a curve as 2009 hit though, as they changed their label name from Bolt Vibe to Lap Fox Tracks. At this time, their popularity skyrocketed. This is when they stopped going by Renard in favor of Ren Queenston. Throughout the last decade, though, this has changed to Howie Labs, and Emma has started going by Emma SX. One of the things that makes Emma unique is that they use an entire cast of characters when they create their music, often associating each to a specific genre or subgenre of music. Emma has probably built up a bigger library of music than any other for a musician and still continues to work on new things today, despite her massive popularity decline. Well, it was worth a shot. Duke is an alternate character of Oz Kangaroo. He was born in 1984 and got his first Duke suit around 2002, but retired it and moved to his 2.0 suit a decade later. This suit is the one we all know and love today. Duke has done plenty of fursuit dances, participated in fursuit dance competitions, and has done covers of different songs. My personal favorite has to be the MFF K Sera, which has a bit of a special story with it that I might explore in another video. Duke is also known as simply that dancing dog. Despite my failure to turn up contact, I did find out Majira recently had an interview with him, which seemed helpful at first. For some reason, Duke seems to have a distinct lack of info online, from YouTube to Wikifur to LiveJournal and even for Affinity. His FA page even mentions he is rarely online anymore, and this might be the reason for this. But nonetheless, I felt like he was worth mentioning in this video. Duke, you're amazing. Stay amazing, and I hope things are going well for you. And all the lights of me is there and blinding. Yeah, I'm nice to sing a dog, and this is Paul's The Walls. And right now, I have a favor I need to ask of all of you. It's about to get furry up in here, so let me see your Paul's The Walls. Here we go. You ready? Five, four, three, six, and one. New 
newest big name to work his way into the spotlight has to be Nice the Singing Bell. Nice as a character was conceptualized in 2013 after a man named Kyle McCarthy graduated college. Nice was named after a relative's husky named Nikki and first drawn out by the artist Casper. Nice got his start with music later that year when he released several singles. These were referred to as rough drafts for songs he would produce in the future, some of which found their way into his first official release, an extended play called The Extended Play. Nice released the extended play later that year and then began work on his full-length album. Unleashed was released in February of 2014, swinging with 13 upbeat, energetic, electropop songs. He began to move away from this genre and more into rock in his next album, Instinct, which released the following year. Instinct was unveiled at FangCon 2014, with a bit of a tonal shift from the track from before. However, Nice's third full-length album, Beast, swayed far away from his original style in favor of a lot more rock. Beast closed off this trilogy of albums with some great tracks being released in 2016. This time, however, Nice would tour his album around the United States performing in suit for the world to see. In a Q&A Nice held in April 2017, he mentioned wanting to really go full circle with his next album and return to his electropop roots. The way he described it was morphing the two styles into something that brought elements of them both. The first taste we would get of this would come later that year with Deck the Dogs. Deck the Dogs was a short album with only five songs, but does serve as a good example of maybe what to expect from him in the future. Nice's next album, titled Escape the Humans, was slated to release last year, but was delayed and is yet to come out. Nice hasn't been around super long, but it's gained quite a following. He regularly performs live at conventions, public events, or during his tours. He occasionally does covers and even accepts song commissions if you're willing to dish out a little cash his way. This is an amazing musician, one of my personal favorites in the fandom, and I really cannot wait to see where he goes next. <laughs> Furry music has become more than just a niche group in this fandom. It's ever growing into a significant part these days. Faces have come and gone, but the art lives on, throughout the big shots and the hundreds of others with their own stories. Mm -hmm.